Hey guys, it's Ernesto and welcome back to yet another photo shoot. Now, this particular photo shoot is a wedding that I recently did. Now, we're going to be bringing you the engagement um, session as well uh, when that is ready. We're going to bring you that so you guys can have a, an engagement and also the wedding. Now, in this particular wedding um, and in most weddings, all the weddings that I do, I basically try to have like a pre-meeting with the couple and basically talk to them about how things would unfold because for the most part, you know, when you're working with a couple, especially a married couple, they've probably never been in front of a, um, a professional camera before. I never really worked with a professional photographer before. So it's always great to basically outline your agenda for the day and how things would unfold because you want to get them on the same page and you want to be able to get everybody that you need to be there um, at the, the getting ready session. So what I try to do is basically have like the mom, the pop, you know, sisters, aunts, the immediate family basically at the getting ready session. So I can get those shots out of the way at the beginning. So basically getting the combination of the bride with her parents, her grandparents, et cetera, and the groom with his parents, grand, et cetera. I try to get those shots out of the way. Those are the key shots that I want to get out of the way. Now, obviously I would take those shots again at the ceremony, but just in case I miss it, I always want to get those as a, as a backup. All right. So that's what I try to do, you know, and I basically try to outline everything else that I would need on that day. Now, in this particular wedding, the bride and groom specifically requested that they don't see each other before the ceremony. Now, typically when this happens, is we don't basically have enough time to do the bridal portraits. Now, I specifically outline to them that we won't have that time to do it. So they are aware that, you know, some of the shots that they will be looking for, they won't get because we don't have the time to do it. Now, we try to see if there will be some time after the ceremony that we could do it and there wasn't enough time to do it there. So the only shots that we were able to get is like the getting ready shots um, of the bride, the groom. And then we got like one um, shot that they wanted, which is basically with the groom and the bride in the hallway, um, not seeing each other, just holding hands. And then I basically added in the parents in there also just to add a little bit of, uh, um, you know, flavor in there as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this was a very, a very tight, as far as timeline is concerned, uh, wedding. Now, I, like I said, I knew exactly what I was getting into because we planned for it. I knew how things was going to unfold. So I can't stress enough, plan, plan, and, you know, have as much control over your timeline, um, the day of the event, you know, be aware of the wedding planners, um, timeline and try to adjust. Um, the timeline as much as possible that you would need um, for your photo session, you know, work with the wedding planners, make sure that they, you know, they're aware of what you need and vice versa. So guys, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Please put some comments down below. And let me know what you think. Please share this video with your friends and family. And lastly, guys, if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and you'll be able to get to see more videos like this. Guys, thank you very much. Let's jump into this video. All right, so here we are. We just arrived and we're getting our stuff all um, set up here. I have my 5D Mark III with the 70 to 200, which basically is my favorite setup um, for any session. Um, so when I start a getting ready session, the first thing I generally do when I walk into the room is I turn off all the lights and then I try to find that window light if there's a window in the room and if in this particular case there is um, so another thing that i did in this room is i basically removed that lampshade which you see there on camera left behind the bride it was directly behind the bride and it was a little bit distracting i also removed the chair that's behind me that was behind the bride as well so i removed that so that we could have just a little bit more room to work with there um, so now what you see me doing here is basically getting some test shots. Now, the two things that I do when I do um, test shots is I basically try to one, obviously get my exposure and two, I also try to cheat and get my composition. So I try to do those two things um, to kill two birds with one stone, to, you know, so I don't play around with the composition when I'm actually working with the bride. 
Now, one of the things that I noticed when I was uh, testing out on um, in this particular um, shot here, when I was testing it out, I noticed that the, all the shots was not in focus, and I didn't realize why it wasn't in focus. So, I saw that my my lens was in manual focus, and that's that's basically what it was. So I had to take that off of there. So now, what you see me doing here, the things that I talk about for the most part in my Monday critique videos, is that you know turn the body away from the light and it will add a lot more texture to um, the dress. And as you could see here, you can't, you know, you could see it clearly in this um, video here, so much texture you have there. I mean, if you had to turn our body towards that light, you would have lost all that texture. So um, you will see the first couple of shots pop up on the screen. So this was the first setup. All right guys, here we are on another setup. So in this setup, I'm just basically asking the bride to pretend to open the curtains. And I'm just basically getting a test shot and making sure my composition and exposure is correct because if it's not correct, the, you know, the shot is all off. And plus she moved um, her position. Now she's facing the lights as a little bit more um, harsh. Now. With that being said, I'm not taking a shot of her dress, so that wasn't really that important to me. So losing that texture was okay. Um, so what I'm doing here is just asking her to be very, very specific in her movement and the pose and her eye uh, position as well. So in a moment here, you'll see the shot that pops up. Now here we are in the second setup. Now, I must admit, I've probably seen this pose somewhere, but I just immediately got the idea to basically set up this pose um, because I, you know, I got the inspiration because of her bun, her hair bun. And I just said, you know what? You know, it would be probably be really cool, you know, if you pretend to hold it or pretend to be actually, you know, fixing it or something like that. Um, and I'm pretty sure, like I said in the back of my head, I'm pretty sure I saw this post somewhere else. But you know what, guys? Just read magazines um, and you'll get these things stuck in the back of your head just like it's stuck in the back of the mind. So, um, you know, I don't pull these things out of nowhere. I get it from somewhere. But in any case, you'll see the image of, um, of this particular post pop up on the screen. So here we are at the Matron of Honor, and I'm basically having her put the veil in the bride's um, here at this point. So I'm just letting her go through the whole motion of actually doing it. And I'm not even taking any pictures at this point. I just want them to basically go through that. And I'm observing how the light is falling on them and all that good stuff. So once that was done, I basically, you know, I told her, don't go anywhere. Um, so I basically said, let's uh, reenact that really quickly. So now that I know where the light was falling, now I knew exactly where I wanted to have um, both of them set up. So 
I had the bride position her hands um, in front of her, and then I had the maid, maid of honor, which is also um, the bride's sister here. I had her position her hands uh, where I wanted it. Right now she's blocking the hair, so I basically told her just to bring her hands down just a little bit, just like that. So I could see more of the bride's um, face, so she's not blocking it as much. And then I basically had them position their faces a little bit more biased towards that light and a little bit more profile so that I could see their faces. And then I just have them, you know, giggling and laughing just so I could get um, the shot that I wanted so we can have a little bit more emotion to it. And after I did that, these are the shots that I got. All right, so here we are on the next setup. So this setup is by far was my most difficult setup of the entire day. Now, it's not because of lighting, it's not because of the pose, it's just because I knew this particular setup had the potential of being something that I would like. Now, there's always one or two shots that you always walk away with from any photo session that you're just in love with. and this shot, these shots, I should say, were the ones that I walked away with that I was so in love with. These were like, you know, the hero shots, if you would. Um, for this, I utilized my 85 uh, 1.2 lens, and I think I shot it at 1.2. Um, I needed a high, um, a high angle of um, this shot, and the only place that I could stand was on the bed. I did take my shoes off. Um, I didn't stand on the bed with my shoes, um, but, you know, I was very specific, I was very, very picky in this particular shot because I wanted everything to be exactly the way um, I envisioned it, envisioned it in my head. So here are the shots that's going to pop up on the screen now. Now here we are with the room right outside of the room that we were just in. Now the bride and groom didn't want to see each other before the ceremony. So what they decided to do was just basically uh, come up to the room and just hold hands um, before uh, the ceremony. And you know, we try to come up with some creative ways to, to get um, that particular shot. But this particular thing that we're doing here is just, I'm just, you know, biding time and just getting some shots of the groom while he waits outside of the room. And the shot that you're going to see popping up on the screen, um, we didn't have a video of it, but is the same exact setup um, utilizing the ice light to light the subject.
Now here we are, we have the bride um, I'm out of the room and we had the groom stand up against the wall so that he, you know, they don't see each other. Now as far as the setup here, what we have going on here is the ice light. The ice light was basically uh, lighting the groom and the ceiling light was lighting our bride. Um, now in this particular shot, I didn't really get the vision that I was trying to go for here specifically um, because I really couldn't push them too much because I didn't really want them to see each other and if they see <laughs> And if they would have seen each other, it would have ruined the entire day. So I had to, you know, basically be happy with what I got and not push them too far. But what I did get after I got the initial shot of them holding their hand, uh, holding hands, I decided to get the parents to also um, stand behind the scenes. And the way I lit um, the parents was basically I utilized a speed light. So Zach, um, who's handling the video right now, went inside and held that speed light to get that shot. guys so here we are at the elevator bank uh, we just finished taking um, the shots that you just saw um, from that hallway directly ahead as you can see it there um, and we at the elevator banks and I noticed that there was this nice light that was right at the elevator bank and I said you know what let's take some shots right here because I really like that light and you know we just base I basically set them up um, roughly and I exposed for the light and then everything else just went to darkness and just created some nice glue shots that's about to pop up on the screen right now. So we didn't leave the floor yet. Um, I was shooting at the elevator bank and then I decided to take him down a hallway. Um, and in that hallway, all I wanted to capture was that nice lead-in lines of all those lights going down um, the hallway. Now, in order to get that, I needed to expose for those lights and I needed to expose for the, for the ambient light. And in order to me to get him properly exposed, I utilized the flash um, to help to get him exposed properly. Now, as far as the pose here, the pose is a little bit more casual and I wanted to get something nice and low. So all I did is I asked him to lean forward to correct my perspective and I went on the floor and I got uh, the shot that you're about to see on the screen shortly. So we finally made it downstairs and I'm very cognizant of the time because I really didn't have much time to work with the bride or the groom in this particular, um, on this particular wedding. And I really didn't get any chance to work with them collectively because they didn't want to see each other before um, the ceremony and after the ceremony, we really didn't have much time. So. All the time that I had was basically to work with the bride and the groom individually. In this particular shot, I'm utilizing the pavement to bounce some light back into the subject's face and get a nice cool shot of him in the car. So 
So my goal in this shot was just to get a nice little cool shot of the groom. And how I did that was just basically asking him to put his hands in his pocket, bend his knee, and um, make his face a little bit more biased towards that light that's coming off the pavement. And another thing what I wanted to do as far as the composition is to get rid of all that noise that's in the background because we are right in front of the hotel. And all I did was basically lower my camera angle in order to do that. And I used the build-in behind him to help frame him up nicely in, in the image. So you never want to waste an opportunity, especially if you have um, a good source of light. Um, so what I did here, I basically asked the guys to come in um, to the shot now. And I'm still utilizing that same light source, which is the light that's bouncing off of the pav pavement. Um, to basically bounce some light into their faces. Um, while I was setting them up, I realized that um, the groom um, didn't have a shades um, just like the other guys. Um, so I wanted to take a shot, um, although he didn't have his shades on, I wanted to take a shot without um, his shades. So basically the two guys in their shades and, and um, the groom without his shades. But uh, they quickly um, brought over the shades over and actually that turned out to be I think a better shot than, I, than what I had in vision in my in my head. So I'm actually glad that they brought it over um, and it actually turned out to be a pretty cool shot. Um, so with posing guys um, or posing groups of people period, um, generally what I try to do is pose each person individually. Um, and you know when you're trying to set up like these cool shots if you're doing like family formals or stuff like that you know it's a totally different story but when you're doing like you're trying to do like cool shots like these all I do is like pose um, each guy individually the groom was already posed um, the gentleman which is his brother directly to the uh, right of him um, I posed him and the gentleman to the left of him also his brother um, he was already set up roughly the way uh, I like it. I took a test shot here, and then after I took the test shot, we switched up his pose. And then after we switched up the pose, then, then we got what we wanted. And I think we got a nice little cool shot here. So here's the shot now. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys got a lot of information from it. Most importantly, I hope you guys got inspired from what you saw today. So guys, I wanna thank a couple of people that helped make this video possible. First of all, I wanna thank the couple for hiring us for doing both the photography and the videography. Thank you very much for doing that. I also want to thank Kevin who was assisting us on this photo shoot specifically for the videography side of things. So Kevin, I'm sure Wayne appreciated all your help with that. So thank you very much for doing that. Now I also want to thank uh, Zach, Zach who basically recorded the behind the scenes footage that you guys are seeing now in this video. So thank you very much Zach for doing that because without you we wouldn't have a video to show. So I appreciate that. Now guys, if you enjoyed this video and you got a lot of information from it, please give it a thumbs up and please share it with your friends and family. Put some feedback down below and let me know what you think. Now, if you got this far in the video, you must be enjoying this content and you must be enjoying the other content on this channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And guys, I will see you on the next video.